Hey Internet, it's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and this is Dead Man's Trigger, Episode 5 of our Call of Cthulhu series, Mythos Investigators. This is an original scenario by our own Ricky called Lawlerville. And uh, it's been a minute, so in, <laughs> in just a few moments we'll have... Uh, uh ricky give us a, a recap um uh if you are here for the first time you can uh check out all of our vod's on youtube.com slash mini terrain domain you can get caught up on lawlerville as well as all of our other streams speaking of our other streams you can catch us on monday nights at 8 p.m eastern for scribes and scrolls a pathfinder 2e adventure um returning hopefully soon uh you should be able to catch us on every other tuesday night for sky metal iron gods another pathfinder 2 campaign um periodically supposedly on wednesdays though lately it's been on saturdays or sundays is so basically whenever cthulhu decides that we should play is when mythos <laughs> investigators happens and then yeah. of course on thursdays is our kids on bikes rpg welcome to paradise michigan um so we hope to see you in some of those other streams check those things out a couple quick announcements right up here above my head you will notice that there is something that looks like a bunch of dice and there's a little a little modifier up there that i'm actually going to change these are our mythos dice or domain dice as we call them uh domain dice are a way that you can influence the games uh each game has its own set of uh dice for this game they're mythos dice you can cheer 500 bits tip five dollars subscribe resubscribe gift a subscription and we will get more of these dice up here any player can either uh, roll or make another player roll on the mythos tales. The results are are integrated into the story by the keeper, um, and sometimes they fall on a scale of good to bad. I don't think there's any good in this scale that Ricky's mm -hmm. using. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think it's just no. degrees of bad. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for those, um, and keep that in mind when you subscribe. Uh, or gift subs or anything like that um i want to r remind our viewers that uh we as players have a set of safety tools in place we have clearly defined lines and veils that we understand and uh this is a a, uh, a horror themed story it is uh, adult in nature. The language and scenarios depicted will be adult in nature at times. Um, and uh, there may be things that some people may deem as disturbing imagery. First and foremost, know that we are watching out for one another and we know what our safety tools are so that we can use those. Secondly, if that is something that is not for you, please head on over to another stream. We will not be offended if you leave. Um, and uh, springing off of that uh this is a chance to to just talk about mental health and remind you that you matter your presence on this earth makes a difference whether you believe it or not it's true people struggle for any number of reasons there's all kinds of things believe me this world is giving a lot of reasons for people to be struggling um and uh we just want you to know that first it's okay to not be okay it's okay to have those struggles but know that you do not have to struggle alone. Um, and uh, there is help out there. At any time, <clears throat> you can come into our chat and you can type exclamation point help, as I have just done in the chat there, or you will see it periodically show up along the bottom of the stream. And uh, a couple URLs will pop up. Findahelpline.com, or you can check out takethis.org's growing list of resources. We encourage you to check out those links, bookmark them, save them for yourself, save them for a friend, and remember, you matter. 
with that i am going to turn it over to our keeper our historian uh the man who holds all of our nightmares in his hands ricky <laughs> and nightmare you don't know you even have yet like oh my goodness right <laughs> all right everybody can hear me good yes all right so in our last session um we were escaping from the lawlerville community center and in which case a great cosmic river surrounded the sky of lawlerville with ambient darkness all around the town as everyone attempted to flee. Um, Carpy has some things that she remembered in her past that involved her husband inside of a burning car and her being suspended from the police force for taking an investigation too far. In addition to... um, losing control inside of the vehicle and being thrown out of a moving vehicle and being reduced down to one hit point, I believe. Um, I think those are the big things, right? Am I missing something? It was a while ago, about a month and a half, right? All right. Without further ado, Jake, um, as Hawthorne, what is your rank in the military? What is it or what was it? Well, <laughs> what was it? Um, before the incident, I was a sergeant. Okay. Give me a 1d100 and roll with disadvantage. Okay. That's the tens number that's rolled twice, yes, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. Where's my other ten? Of course, I can't find it. There we go. Uh, with disadvantage, so I either have a seven or a twenty-seven. Twenty-seven will do just fine. Give me a d6 roll with advantage, and then give me a d4 roll with advantage. Uh, four for the D6 and a D4, you said? Yes, please. With advantage. Uh, that is going to be a two. Perfect. You stand outside of Great Falls Airport. Great Falls is a city adjacent to Larlerville. It is pouring, freezing rain, and you're waiting for the taxi that you called to arrive. As you're standing there, a man in a trench coat saddles up next to you. What is your appearance to this man? How do you look? Um, scuffed combat boots, blue jeans uh, that are well-worn, um, a t-shirt, um, probably a, a, a a well-worn t-shirt of um like a star wars shirt or something like that uh with a flannel kind of over that and then wearing a um wearing a uh um black very just very basic black uh jacket over top of all of that and you were holding an army duffel bag so would someone be able to tell that you serve time in the military just by the way you look? Um, you know, soldiers have that look about them. Yeah, when they I think stand. I think the two biggest tells would be the uh, s- still bearing the high and tight haircut ah, and mm-hmm. uh, the army duffel bag uh, that is slung over my shoulder. The man looks at you and sees your appearance and says, military man, just get back. I kind of glance at him for a second, debating whether to engage. Yeah. Yeah, just getting back. What branch? You look like a, uh, don't tell me, let me think here. And he points with his right arm and kind of turns the angles towards you at a 45 degree angle. 
Looks like army guy, huh? Not bad. And as you look at him, you can tell that his left coat sleeve is pinned up. He's missing an arm. And he's got some scarring on the left side of his face. He goes, uh... You look like a man who's seen a few things. More than... More than anybody should. Hmm. Name's Millhouse. He extends his right hand to you. I'll take it and shake it. Didn't catch yours, I'm sorry. Hawthorne. Hawthorne, Hawthorne. Yeah, Hawthorne. 27 to life. Court martial, right? This definitely piques my interest. How do you know that? Interesting. General Court Martial, out in four years. You must know someone important. Mm -hmm. I figured just got lucky. Huh. I would say uh, the timing of you being transferred to a different jail and then in between that transfer, your complete trial files, government documents being lost to where at the end of the day, they can only see that you had, what, conduct unbecoming of a soldier and have you locked up? That's more than lucky. Who the Seems hell like are your you? whole Special Agent Milhouse, FBI. Don't worry. <sighs> not here for that. You're not in trouble. Your sister, Dr. Melissa Hawthorne. What about her? Just doing some pretty important research up there in Lawlerville, huh? Not that she would talk about it or anything, but it's our job to keep an eye on these things. Listen, um, she's got some interesting funding near Infinite from um, Unity Capital, I believe. Uh, working for Advent Technologies on a military contract. Listen. I'll make this simple for you. The research she's doing is uh, some would say fringe. More than fringe, almost. Magical. There's a quote somewhere, I believe it was a who was that author? Was it Asimov or was it Clark? The sufficient level of technology seems like magic. Yeah, no matter, listen. And he hands you a card and the card has some weight to it. It's not on card stock. This business card is on a metal, like weighted, weighted piece of metal. It's a black business card and there's a circle etched into it with a triangle. And on that triangle, you look at it, and there's on each corner the three points. You see the word Scientifia, or sorry, I'm sorry, Scientia, Moore's Est. And you flip it around, and there's a phone number on the back. Things get weird around here. Give me a call, huh? Oh, I think your cab's here. Silas, you pull up in your taxi. You're muted. You, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I leaned over and I rolled down my window uh, and uh, just shout it. Call a cab. <clears throat> yeah, that's me. Hold on. Are we done here? And. As you're saying that, his back kind of turning, he's already two paces away. 
don't lose that card. And he kind of walks and makes a right into the terminal again in the baggage claim. About an hour later, you are at the bridge, Lawlerville Bridge. You see a parade of women behind a older woman with silver short hair. And she is walking out of the darkness and your sister is behind within that crowd of parade of women. As you're looking at that woman, we are brought to the present time. Are you in the front seat of the cab or the back seat of the cab? I think it was me, Hawthorne's sister, and then him. Okay, everyone draw a square in your paper or a rectangle, like a mock cab. And then we all want to get our positions nailed down here. I, I was passenger was side back seat. In the, I was in the yeah, passenger front you're, seat. Yeah, you're rolling <laughs> into the darkness as the car, <laughs> you know, you see like this um, periscopic um, viewpoint of the world where you see the taillights and then concrete, then trees, then sky, then taillights again, you know, in that order, like several dozen a times. A bit smaller, as you, yeah. Yeah, as your body <laughs> comes to a rest. Oh. Yeah, I think in All the right. back, yeah, it was Melissa Steve was right in the behind middle. the driver. Yeah, correct. Uh, Steve I'm right behind the driver, the Melissa in the middle. I was okay. passenger side back seat, so You're I was on the opposite side, side of his yeah. sister. Got it. All right. And I, so I drew, was your I drew an there. arrow. Yeah, oh, yeah. I drew an arrow with okay. Carpy off on the outside of the box. <laughs> <laughs> you are here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This woman walks out of into the middle of the road in front of your cab Bender what do you do as Hawthorne sees her first somehow well I, I was probably still reeling from having to chuck someone out of my cab so, so as, 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 I, as I come back in yeah if I saw her uh, first I would have shouted at you kind of like gra- done that annoying thing they do in the movies where I grab your arm from behind you yeah. Look out! <laughs> Fuck! And I, and I, and I, and, I, and I, one with with my with my real left hand, I sort of just reach over and I and I kind of wheel it real quick to try and, you know, basically you know port rounder. Give me a quick drive control. See how well you keep control of this vehicle with drum brakes and no anti lock brakes or what's the power <laughs> steering and. Oh man. Huh. Um. I am, I am one with the vehicle. Rebecca, what are you thinking as you see Carpy's body tumble into the darkness, rolling? I think that Rebecca has like a flash of they they have they knew each other like when they were young like you know how they say that before you die your life flashes before your eyes like as Carpy gets yeeted uh, <laughs> Rebecca kind of remembers like pleasant memories that they had together and then is kind of like therefore as she's this is kind of happening is in shock as she watches Carpy sees her for a second kind of tumble Mm -hmm. and then nothing. Yeah, it looks as if you're driving down a country road with no lights and seeing that darkness just engulf someone as she tumbles Mm -hmm. down into the darkness. Give me a quick sanity sanity. check. Um, Hawthorne, you as well, what are you thinking as you see this woman in front of you and this chaos just happened? Passed? All right. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> man, with everything that's going on, I think I'm still sort of partially in that, um, in that mode of the soldier instincts and mm-hmm. not so much, there's a, there's a, comp- a compartmentalization that happens when the unbelievable is happening whether it's watching Humvees and uh, your fellow soldiers blow up in front of you, buildings toppled to the ground, or uh, tentacles coming out of a great cosmic river and snatching people (laughs) up, your mind has to, the soldier's mind has to turn off the the processing of the uh, reality of whatever that is to focus on the primary objective, which is to protect myself <laughs> and anybody under my charge, which in this case is my sister. Silas, how'd you score on that turn? Oh, failed. Oh, 
spectacular. The car. Yeah, and, which way were you it, going? Left and right? it, it, it's, it was twenty off. And I'm not. I'm not ready to spend twenty luck on, on, on saving this. <laughs> idiot who just steps in the road. Well, <laughs> the luck will come in as a secondary thing. You can re-roll it if you want and try to push the roll. I could push, but it's my car, you know man. Me. Yeah. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I get a pretty good chance of success if I push. Atta boy! Let's Atta go. Boy, right. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's push. Go. All, right. All right, you got to roll it. disadvantage. Do it. Kill him. What's up? Nothing. Gotta roll with um, disadvantage. No, wait. Oh, ruin. I'll let you push naturally. Okay. It's just gonna be way worse if you fail. Well, yeah, that's, that's the whole point. Okay, so that's a forty, which is which is a uh, regular uh, success on drive auto for me. Okay. Good. Which way were you turning? And describe what your vehicle is doing. It nearly misses like a. Well, I assume I was close to the side of the road, which is yeah. where that went out. So, so I, I, I and I, you know. My eyes would immediately pick up. All right, no, no oncoming headlights. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go into the the other lane to kind of, you know, kind of, kind of jerk it one way, then jerk it back. So kind of, just, kind of loop around, kind of thing. And you can see the everyone in the car kind of goes to the left, and then to yeah, the right. Oh yeah, like kind of very, very. And, 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 as, and as it comes back, that the the door, which is still partially open, slammed shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hell um. Yeah. Hawthorne, you see as the car is whipping left and right, um, your sister is trying to hold onto her phone, but she's in phenomenal abdominal pain. And <clears throat> see what she does here. Okay, she goes, oh, God, I think I'm going to be sick. But she holds on. And you kind of hear that quiet, like, stomach burp people do before they belt for the Rebecca neck. leans as far away from Melissa as she can. All right. The woman, as you get control of the car, do you keep going forward or what do you want to do? Oh yeah. If, yeah, if I, if, if I was able to sort of get around her without, without, without clipping her, uh, mm -hmm. I'm just assuming that, that she was either, you know, part of whatever's going on or an, or an idiot. <laughs> see, see. I mean, he's got a glance to, in, you know, glance. Oh, he can't. Uh, there's no rear view, rear view mirror. Anymore. No rear view mirror. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, he'll glance in the side mirror then, and mm -hmm. and uh, just to kind of glance to make sure she's still upright that he didn't actually hit her because he's pretty sure he didn't, but he wants to double check. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just in in sort of in the, in the red tail lights as 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 he pulls around her. It's it's a weird perspective because as you look into your rearview mirror, her back is turned towards you, and she looks over her shoulder, and her eyes has such malevent or malice in them that it kind of punches you in your brain, and you feel like you know. Yeah, I, I just, just look away. <laughs> Damn it. Um, and and yeah, he, he's he's gonna, um, uh. Pop, pop in his pop in his mixtape and and uh turn it up a bit <laughs> as you are driving focus. as you're driving through the neighborhood there are literally people you see as you drive through some homes or as you're driving in and out of the streets of Laurelville. where are you guys going by the way i was literally about to ask the same uh, question it, yeah basically where wherever the center of lauder Lauderville is we're going perpendicular to that away from it Correct. All right. In, so, in, in whatever order this seems clear. Okay. Then once 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 we're free and once we're away, mm -hmm. and things begin to maybe potentially coalesce into some semblance of normalcy, we'll 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 you know we'll decide at that point. At least that's what he's thinking. You know, we, yeah. we need we need we need to we need to get get to some place stable first, some so we can place, actually make, have some kind of decision made. You know, made. Some homes outside of them, people are tearing each other apart like literally fighting and you see if you look over you'll see someone with a hammer just bludgeoning a dead body underneath them um you hear I, mean, I, I double check to make sure the, i double check to make sure the car vent is closed um, <laughs> it's on circulate mode <laughs> right yeah. oh yeah and yeah 100 percent. how bad is that mildew smell from that old 1974 air conditioner 78 oh it, it it's it's terrible not only, not only is there still cigarette smoke in here still uh, the, the, that just has never gotten out, even though it doesn't allow hasn't allowed anyone to smoke in this cab in, in decades. Um, 
but also this this sort of a faint sour smell in the background from all the drunks. And in fact, he 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 sort of reaches down in the it's down in the seat, pulls it up, and he hands hands you back, uh, uh, Hawthorne, a, a a a coffee can with a with a lid. It looks pretty. Old. It looks kind of beat up. It's like he's been in the vehicle a while. Um, and he hands it back to you. So here. It, it, he's it, it, if she, if she if she if she needs to if she needs to uh, you know if you're gonna spew uh, spew into uh, this yeah 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 okay that, that that's why it is the cover so it's it's calamity all around some people are being yanked out of their homes by the tentacles in the air some houses are being swallowed into the earth people you hear sporadic gunfire you are not sure in which direction guns are firing um. It is like a hellscape. Some people are running out of their house and they're on fire. It is carnage everywhere. Hawthorne, what are you thinking as you survey this scene? With the great ocean above you still. <clears throat> so I think as we are continuing to drive away after the initial shock of, of uh, Fender shoving Carpy out the door, um, and everything else going on uh it's it's like that scene in in the beginning of the last of us where mm -hmm. just looking around in all directions at this chaos and that compartmentalization uh that i talked about a moment ago the walls are starting to come down mm -hmm. as especially kind of i imagine kind of leaning my head against the window and looking up at this great cosmic river and seeing everything happening around and and uh not the ability to separate those things is rapidly disintegrating and i my mind is grasping for a place to put this because i don't have any frame of reference let's roll a sanity check how how many bullets left in your gun by the way I'm trying to remember. I vaguely recall last session asking we're out. Fender You're for out. bullets. Yeah, because yeah, someone the <laughs> 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 threw the bullets out the door right before she got thrown out the door. So yeah. yes. So, so uh, not not so crazy checking her out, huh? Yeah, yeah. Glorious so, final have, action. Yeah, Thank you. That's to, no. to make sense. Made the world uh, safe for today. That's a thirty. And I want to roll under my sanity. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is 45, so. Okay. How do you steal your mind? Um, oddly, I think the thing that grounds me is a combination of looking away from the things that I can't process, the, the river, and looking at the things that I can process, which is people on fire, people acting somewhat in strange ways. It's like, as I'm looking at the scene, the more bizarre the behavior, I will skip over that and look for people that are fighting, people that are, are, uh, and, and the other thing is listening to the gunshots. Yeah. Uh, the gunshots is like a, uh, it, it, it's like a stake in the ground. It's it is one of the most <laughs> familiar things to me, um, and that's what I'm concentrating on. Rebecca, this is yeah. the fucking news story of the century. Yeah, what I are know. you doing? I so almost as like in a mirror um, of Hawthorne, kind of like stealing himself from this scene. You see in the other window, Rebecca her 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 visage almost looks like hungry mm. like she she wishes she had like the big news camera mm -hmm. she she wishes she had something other than her phone mm -hmm. but um she's just like watching all of this and trying to take it in and almost like taking, she's making mental notes are you taking pictures with your phone or recording it at all uh yeah she's ta she's taking a couple videos and trying to keep it as still as she can mm -hmm. um yeah, just what, yeah, for sure. Are you are you monologuing into the camera as it's recording, saying anything? Uh, no. Honestly, okay. she would just be trying to get like a like a raw like raw footage, and she is kind of thinking about what she will be saying over top of it later. Okay. All right. I, I'd like to think at this point is when 
Fender pushed the tape into the into the into the tape player mm -hmm. and began and began to play. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, uh, Queen, "Don't Stop Me Now." Oh my god! <laughs> give I'm me having a good time. A, a... Give me a exactly. um. <laughs> give me an occult check. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> That's why it's they your... call me Mr. Ferret. Hi. It's in your head now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Sorry, what am I rolling for again? A cult, please. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, scratch out a success at 49. Oh, spectacular. When you put the tape in, you hear it as it's supposed to be intended to be heard. I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry. You're the only one that hears it in reverse. So everyone okay. else hears the song, but you're you know, it's all in reverse when you yeah. hear it. Okay. And you hear <clears throat> almost as if there's a secret message on the tape as it's being played backwards. I'm sure Silas is 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 no uh, uh is 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 no stranger to backwards masking. He's, this is like, this is like he's like oh I, I know exactly what this is. this is. What is the backward masking message from your father in this song? Um. All right. He said. Uh, so it sounds kind of. Yeah. Not escape with your uh, companions. They must go. You you be pulled back. Pull back. Always back. You'll never succeed. You know, it, it just yeah. sort of a, 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 you know, more more of, more of like anti anti mantras, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's spectacular. Hawthorne, your sister grabs your forearm, and she grabs your hands. Your hands are pretty like one of the hands pretty mangled, right? Because the gun went off. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. And she goes, "My dear brother, that must hurt." <clears throat> it's fine. It's not important right now. How are you? And, how are you feeling? And I have something to tell you. I wanted to tell Brock, but he's been gone, and you're the only one I have. I'm pregnant with his baby. Oh. Oh. I. <clears throat> I Honestly, I I don't know if I should be <laughs> happy or pissed off. Both, because I am. But more importantly, and she um she has a lanyard on with her ID badge from Advent Technology, and there's a flash drive and um attached to the ID badge, and she grabs your form and she goes, "I need you to listen to me very carefully." If I don't make it, you need to bring this flash drive to the lab. Plug you... it into my computer and follow the instructions. I need you to listen to me. Do you, are you getting what I'm saying to you right now? Yes, I, I heard you, but what do you mean if you don't make it? We need... This is the human race in its entirety 200 million years of evolution will come to a grinding halt today if I die and this doesn't get there promise me you'll do this no matter what listen this I badge, promise. I promise. badge will get you in find my office you know a password, right? Our mother's name. A mother's name in the year she was born. Okay. And she clenches her stomach again. And... I imagine the camera pans slightly to the side and you just see Rebecca sitting there like hearing all of this because we're just still <laughs> sitting in the back seat together like o awkwardly pretending mm. not to hear like it just like slowly turning the camera <laughs> around to face the people in the car now it's <laughs> getting it all getting it all for so for documentation um 
we shift our scene to Detective Carpy as your body comes to a rest. And in the moments before Brock arrives, you were sitting there beaten. How do you feel about what just happened to you? I think at this moment, I my body is so racked with pain, I can't even believe that I am still conscious to have thoughts. Um, the last thing that's going through her mind at this moment, besides the fuck them all, I'm going to kill them, because um, intrusive thoughts are you know, normal, <laughs> well, is the intrusive thought going, it was probably smart to do that. <laughs> <laughs> your body feels like you've broken every single bone in your body. You are basically immobilized as it sounds like a train made of flesh rolls around you. I don't even want to blink because I feel that's too much movement at this point. And it feels you feel the way you felt when you were five or six years old on Halloween night and you returned, you just maybe heard a story about witches for the first time in first or second grade. And now your back is turned facing the wall. And I feeling you get like, if I turn over as I'm sleeping, the monster is going to be right there looking at me. You can feel the presence of something looking over your shoulder and it feels immense. don't again don't want to move don't want to see i'm now closing my eyes and just kind of like praying whatever it is will either end me quickly or just go away it sounds as if a you hear the sound of something opening and it sounds like a vacuum of air being sucked into it as it opens up behind you and you can feel out of the peripheral vision of your eyesight even though like you're doing your best you can kind of feel that you are completely surrounded by this object it sounds like as the vacuum is swirling it suddenly stops and it goes very quiet and the a gentle hand rests on your shoulder i think i scream as soon as i get touched um not only from just pain but also because <clears throat> i expected it to be something completely <laughs> different mm -hmm. than a gentle touch and don't worry child for you are one of mine Oh, the scream changes, and now it's an anguished scream. Oh. And I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> as you're screaming in anguish, you can feel a giant, it feels as if there is a, a worm the size of your spine in the middle of your chest. Mm -hmm. You hear the voice say, and my children are always protected. And roll me a d6. Oh, God. <laughs> One. One. You are now up to two hit points. Oh, yay. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Just as the hand leaves you and you feel this fountain of energy kind of flow through you, you hear the screams and shouts of potentially one of the devoured souls that gave you that energy as it gives you that one hit point back. And as this fountain continues to flow through you, that's when the machine gun burst begins. The tracer bullets start zipping and ripping in two and the hand reaches away and it becomes a very loud guttural scream as the giant train of flesh unwinds from around you and 
arcs up like a king cobra snake towering above you you what do you do I gasp and I think at this point I actually look I will look up to see what this thing is that was yeah my brain just don't like these thoughts um <laughs> yeah we're gonna look we're gonna look and see what that what it was what's going on it is a it's probably about 30 to 40 feet tall in terms of its height it is completely composed of people it looks like a piece of if bubblegum and flesh were one thing that was chewed up and turned into Mm. a giant worm with different parts that are some of them are half human some of them are parts of human some of them are bisected in these weird eighths or sixteenths but it's all people fused into this giant worm and the head of this worm bears a grinning face of the woman and oh. y- you see as the gunfire rains the hand retract back into the mouth of this giant worm woman oh. and as the mouth as the it's kind of like a um bungee cord kind of retracting back and in the mouth itself the lips are composed of just eyeballs all around and the van pulls over (laughs) comes to your side screeching go for it so when I see that face and the hand coming back and that just that that grinning woman's face, I think that's the moment um, Carpy kind of almost really like snaps a little bit. I'd like to, I, I know my, I'm mangled and stuff, but her instinct is just to still grab that gun that she probably still has in her hand, even though she was tumbling and unload it into that grinning woman's face worm thing. Absolutely. Give me a quick sanity check while you do that. Okay. Oh, that's a fail on the sanity because yeah, we rolled Would high. You fail? I rolled a fifty-five, and my sanity is twenty-one because you know we're doing well. <laughs> Give me. And do you want me roll um, the weapon or just not yet? I want you to roll a d twenty. Okay. Nine. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> oh I was gonna bring it out of one sandy point if you had a crit. Um <laughs> you pick up the gun and you begin squeezing the trigger and you're squeezing the trigger and squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing it. And the gunshots almost seem distant from you as they fire with no effect into this large towering Lawlerville Chorizo person thing. Barack, the van pulls up, kind of skirts to the side. Um, the vigilant citizen hops out of the driver's side. He has a crossbow. And on the crossbow, he fires it into the ground. And there's a stake that hits the ground. You can see that he loads it up with a, it's not quite an arrow, but it's a large tuning fork as he hits it. And he fires the crossbow again, and the tuning fork hits the stake. And it creates this reverberations. And for a moment, the giant worm-like creature recoils back. Brock shouts, Get the fuck in! <laughs> Get in, bitch. We're going shopping. I mean, Carpy will do what she can with her... Um, <laughs> she'll drag her ass to the vehicle <laughs> <laughs> and uh, try to climb in. You try to as you start to climb, give me a quick athletics check with disadvantage. What's athletics? Oh. Or, I'm sorry, this will be, I'm thinking the wrong character sheet. Um, let's do... Um, let's, excuse me, let's do um, strength for this one. So we find the and you said at disadvantage? Yes, please. Uh, that's too bad because I would have had eight otherwise. Um, can I use luck on this one to make 
You can push the roll. And if you fail, we'll not have you roll some luck. Okay. I was so I very love close. It. Let's go. I am so proud of you right now. So I push it, I just roll again with the disadvantage. Is that better? Yes. Oh, that was a worse number. So I failed. Uh, how'd you do? What was, how much did you fail by? Uh, ten. Ten. Oh. As you try to get up, you stumble and fall. You can feel the worm inside of you. And you begin to puke. And as you puke, it's just piles of maggots coming out. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, glad I kicked her out of the cab. Yeah, that was a great choice, and I <laughs> applaud you. Brock looks at you fall, and Brock goes, "Fucking shit!" He gets out of, he gets off of the mounted gun and opens up the slide door of the van. You hear it slide open, and he starts running towards you, and he kind of picks you up, and just as he comes towards you, all of those maggots that you puked out kind of dissolve into the ground he picks you up and loads you into the van the vigilant citizen doesn't have good luck here as he loads another stake to fire the large worm creature whips out with a dozen tentacles and they become like the T-1000 sharp arrows kind of like long steel beams and he gets impaled oh. losing yeah he you see all of these long stakes go inside of him from all these different angles and he's holding the crossbow and he manages to fire it and he's trying to load another one one of the tuning forks into it and just as he loads it into it all of the tentacles inside of him that are now very straight steel beams rip apart oh shit okay all right What do you want oh. to do? I mean, is that much you can do? But what what do you what would you try to do? I kind of want to throw up again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. And yes to your uh, question in chat. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, I don't think there's much at this point that Carpy can do or wants to do, except she just. <laughs> flops on her back and just wishes this is was all over um yeah seeing the guy just destroyed in front of her is this is the last the last straw of this whatever the brock, thing brock looks at the vigilant citizen he's like oh fuck 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 and he doesn't even bother to close the door that you're loaded into into the back of the van he just hops in the he climbs over you hops in a driver's seat and you see from your perspective like the look of you hear tires peeling and you see like this worm creature kind of fading back as he's hitting reverse and then world kind of swifts around this 360 turn and he begins to peel off in the opposite direction of um the where the taxi cab was going so they're going in opposite directions brock is driving really fast really hard and he looks at I you would, go ahead i would try to clamber um up from where i ever i am and into a seat this, mm -hmm. you know so i could have something to grab onto mm -hmm. all right um as he's driving away um there are little, literally tentacles swirling all around hitting the ground around you and he manages to keep you safe he looks over at you and says i'm sure you have some questions 
Yeah, like, where the hell have you been? I think that's about the only thing that comes to mind, because she's, you know, <laughs> not processing what's going on right now. If I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Let's start off with this. Back to the taxi cab. Oh. Nice Where are you guys going? What are you trying to do? Your sister has just told you, Hawthorne, that we need to get to the lab. Um, you can look around the neighborhood. You can see that you're probably about a quarter mile from your house. The lab is probably on, um, it's up on a hill over by Law, outside on the outskirts of Lawlerville. So it's probably about a 12 to 15 minute drive. Yeah, for, for, for Fender's part, he's just sort of, again, heading for the outside. And he's like, uh, we got some decisions to make pretty soon. Uh, we're coming up on uh, whether we decide to go north, south. Um, once we hit, once we hit the, uh, the, the main highway, no the bad lab. ideas here. The lab on the hill. Sorry, the what? The lab's on the hill and I'll kind of lean forward and point in that direction. Uh, okay. What's, what's, what's that? They have a helicopter or something? We, we can get out of here or. I'm, I look, kind of look at him a second and I go, yeah, they might have one. So yeah, he'll he'll uh, he'll kind of look look back and 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 you know look at him in the eye for a minute to make sure he's still you know with us, and uh, decides to to trust him and and he'll uh, he'll take the the turn that brings him to, in the direct general direction of the uh, the lab. Give me a quick luck check. Luck, okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's down quite a bit. Uh, no. I think I'm so happy it's no. As you, everyone else, give me a luck check who's in the car. Okay, here we go. Luck check. Is this uh, the one that we want to yeah. go over or under? No, it's, oh, it's only, it's, yeah, it's, it's only, yeah, there's only one. Only under. I got okay, a, I, under. Oh, I, I got a 96. <laughs> I failed by one. Yeah. As you are saying what you're saying, Silas, there is a crunch that is followed by an immediate impact as the world begins to go topsy-turvy as you're T-boned as an intersection from a car speeding. Oh. How did you do on your luck? I did not succeed, no. You did not succeed. Hawthorne didn't. Everyone who did not pass their luck, everyone give me a 1d6 roll. <laughs> Oh, six. Big ol' one. One. This is how much fucking damage we take from getting T-boned. We got You're hit right. square on the passenger side. You got hit on the rear I'm passenger F. side. I was going to say, that tells us where we got hit, yeah. Yeah, as the car spins out, um, Rebecca, six points of damage. As you feel the impact most of all, like it is numbing, mm. blinding, glass shatters around you as the car spins out and comes to a rest with both cars kind of like with their lights flickering or you know just kind of dim as the chaos is still all around you uh, for for the record numbers wise i'm at two of nine hit points i am absolutely effed and um i would imagine like is the car is probably all crunched in did, it, did we flip did we like you went 360 turn around okay. yeah and you there's there's not too many rest. vehicles out there big enough to flip to flip. Uh, I would say not. Out. So it's a bulldog. Um, <laughs> so I guess Rebecca is probably like her head hurts and is just bleeding. She's got a big gash on her forehead. Um, I mean, I would say probably like everything on her right side at the very least is more or less broken. Like she's her her arm yeah. is broken. We can like, figure that out with the dice. Give me um. The D six and odds are even. Okay, uh, so you want me to call odd or even first, yeah. and then roll it. Okay, yeah. I'll call even. I got four. Oh, that is even. It sure is. All right, so that's going to be your leg, your left leg, um, your femur bone. If My you right try leg. To... Your right leg. I'm sorry. Correct. Okay. Your right leg. Um, your Fuck. shoulder 
and all that is crunched in and you're kind of like pinned underneath the frame of the car mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as the car that hits you kind of like is going in reverse and then lining up to hit you guys again oh man you can as you look you can see the person behind the steering wheel it's a soccer mom her eyes are bleeding and she's screaming she's and she's crying at the same time Hawthorne, what do you want to do you see the car oh. reverse you see the lights kind of go around and the lights kind of rest back on the car itself I... your sister's in between oh wait did you roll luck for your sister real quick i'm sorry oh you yeah, want me to roll luck roll... for my oh, sister God. i don't even don't know what kind of luck she has sister. but i'll roll he's in the middle we'll just call it 50. The best place eight all right oh, yeah she's good like success yeah um what happened to me from that because i got a 96. you sure did um when the car hit your head kind of hit the side of the let's see boom twirling around so your head would either kind of go left and right and on the snap back your head goes through the passenger side windshield there and back or at least cracks it pretty significantly driver's side. driver's side yep give me a 1d6 five as blood comes down and match your hair there are chunk maybe there's pieces of glass stuck in your head um, five hit points of damage. I'm. Oh, you failed too, right? What's that? You failed too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I rolled. I rolled a one. I rolled a one on my d6. Got a one. Oh, that's right. One point. Oh, okay. All wait, right. I did just dazed. roll a one previously. When you had us roll d6s, was that for damage? Mm. That was yes. the damage. Okay, that's better than five. It sure that is. Better sure than is. Five. Okay, hold on, because. That I was gonna those things at, are better than thick. Yeah, don't give, you, don't, think, one don't give you more than you deserve. <laughs> um, this game is punishing enough. Yeah, so kind of shaking my head and shaking blood and glass out of it and seeing this car, I'm going to immediately push open my door mm -hmm. and I'm going to grab my sister and I think just reflexively even though it's all messed up I'm grabbing with my messed up hand mm -hmm. and I'm trying to pull her out and if I have time I'm gonna reach in and try to get Rebecca out too oh, only, what a only hero. if my sister is out Captain America let's go <laughs> let's go um you can pull your sister out right give me a quick strength check now let's While roll he's doing his strength check, Rebecca's not screaming. She's sort of just like in shock, and she's like looking at the blood and kind of like, like uh, shaky breathing. She's hurt very, very oh, badly. Oh snap! That's a two. That's a extreme success. Great, you're able to pull your sister out with ease. You reach back in. You pull Rebecca out. Give me another strength check on that one. Right up. Yep. Rebecca, you can help with that strength tip because you're trying to move out too, to. right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Silas, definitely. what are you doing once, in the Once front he makes there? contact. That's a uh, success. He's Seth. sort of assessing the damage in his head, and, and he's going to try. And, um, well, when he sees this car doing its thing and, 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 and him dragging them out, what he's going to do is is he's going to pull away from them mm -hmm. and and try and, and try and – Lure the thing to not hit, not aim at, aim, aim towards them, basically with the, with the okay. car. All right, go ahead and give me. Yeah, the, I mean that's easy driving. Was throwing the car and driving, and pulling forward. As you pull yeah. forward, that minivan with the crying soccer mom zips past and travels down the street. Oh, so it's it's not coming after us again. No. Okay. It so hits other I, people. I failed to help Steve, but I thought I heard it. Did I got a success, you... just a regular yeah, success. Yeah. So Rebecca is, and understandably so, not a ton of help in this situation. She's fucked up. And when you when you grab her and start to, she starts to move. It's almost like a delayed reaction. Like that's when all the pain hits, and she screams. She screams the most like horrible, anguished scream you've ever heard in your life. Fender, how far do you pull up in front? Well, as soon as, soon as I see that the the van is not going to try and attack, he stops and he'll and he'll put it in reverse and then sort of back around to where they are, um, okay. uh, to 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 check to check on them. 
Okay. Yeah, you back up and you're there and you guys are all, all right. on the street and you're at this standstill with this. As you look around, this cosmic river seems to be like has engulfed the city to where it looks like lava fills inside of a snow globe. Awesome. What do you think the odds are that they'll have uh, any kind of medical uh, supplies at, the, at this lab of yours? Uh, very high. It's a medical right. or uh, it's a it's a lab. it's a full facility. It's it's a science lab. Look, you we don't we don't have, we don't have we don't have far to go. Just give me a, give me just give me a uh, um uh just you know we got I think we can make it. Um, Is it still drivable? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's uh she's been she's taken a lot worse than that. <laughs> um your driving penalty would be a 20 modifier. Yeah. If you choose to use your car still, you can look oh, around yeah. for other cars in the neighborhood or, or whatever you want to do. No, no. He's he's okay. he, he 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 knows his car. Okay. All right. Uh, we um, need We need to find something to to uh brace this leg. Guys, is, it, as uh, yeah. I, as I, as the, this the, conversation's been is happening, tiring in the back. Oh, as this conversation's been happening, you just hear Rebecca going, "Guys, this is bad. This is really, this is really, really, really bad." And you just see her looking, and there you can see a little bone coming out, like where the oh, fibula gosh. is. And Yikes! It's like this is bad. This is really bad. This is, and she's not like it's just she's in a fog. I'm going to take off my jacket. And pull off the. Uh, I just see that Hawthorne's always wearing like a flannel over a t shirt kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to take that flannel and I'm just going to wrap it a couple times around that leg and tie it tightly. Mm -hmm. All movement and athletic checks that involve you running or walking was going to have a penalty of 40 for Rebecca. Oh. You have one leg and it's broken and you're a lot of pain. Yeah. There is. It sounds as if a large um what is it a, a pneumatic pump it sounds like a large giant pump just smashes into the ground like a giant pulse and it comes from the cosmic river above you hear the sound of twisting metal and deep groaning everyone do a sanity check oh. I succeeded. <laughs> Seven. I'm fine. I get a I get a zero zero one. Everybody <laughs> for some, he's 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 probably more worried about his car right now. You get sanity back. <laughs> yeah, right now, not quite. You have an anchor point well, now. You're he, like, I gotta get it into the shop. He, well, he sounded pretty good actually. I mean, I mean, he's taking a hit. He's taking some hits, but uh, so far he's uh, still has he's nowhere near. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Ricky, real quick, I apologize. That no, 40 please. penalty, is that a, any physical check or any check at all? Any physical check. Any physical check? Okay. Yeah, okay. anything that demands running, things like that. Physical. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Can do. You know. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. You might have a penalty on charm, too, with a busted leg like that. Uh, but... the, you know, I think it's a pity <laughs> point. I think I should get a bonus you think on so? charm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Melissa grabs her stomach and she's yells as that pulse goes through we gotta get moving we gotta go now um i'm going to help rebecca back into the car and you hear a lot of crunching i'm going to help melissa back into the back of the car and then I'm going to run around to the other side and get in on the driver's side. I want with the I know Rebecca needs to have a little more room with that legs mm -hmm. broken. Well, we but, have one extra seat in the in the passenger seat front. But I'm going to jump in the no I'm going to jump up front and do that like kind of I'm sitting there but I've also turned sideways so I'm able to look right at uh uh, yeah, these, these these are the big old bench seats. Yeah, so yeah. You, 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 have, you have plenty of room to as, move around. As you turn sideways, can you describe to me the spirit you see sitting in the back seat next to your sister? Uh, <laughs> it is a about a somewhere between twelve and fourteen year old boy with dark hair 
uh, wearing a uh, a white uh, ringer tee with red collar and and uh, around the ends of the sleeves and just a pair of jeans um, and uh, the shirt is also splattered with blood and he looks to be uh, <clears throat> slightly uh, um, like a, a, a little darker complexion looks to be of Eastern European descent mm-hmm Silas, you see the spirit as well. I see. I, I see it as well. Absolutely, of course you see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, I, 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 without, without, without taking his eyes off the spirit, he's the pause. This is like the pauses a moment, and he's still looking at it. He's like, uh, without saying, it, you know, clearly talking to Rothorn, friend of yours. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. A- double take uh, like a tr- trying to make it a subtle double take at at fender and shake it off I, I, no, I, I, I don't know what you mean the, the guy in the seat friend of yours you can see that yeah yeah I see, I see way too much shit. You have no idea. The... Me, me, meanwhile, by the way, Fender is is once everyone is assuming everyone is in and stable, he's gonna start driving again immediately, and you know, be on the way to get, try to get there. Do I see the little boy who's presumably sitting on my lap or on my broken leg? <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> you ever stand next to a subwoofer at a concert? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Okay, that's weird. Rebecca assumes it's because her fucking leg is broken. So and all the rate. weird shit that's happening. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. The spirit, for a moment, looks at you very deeply in your eyes, Hawthorne, and you can hear it mouth or read its lips. And you, you noise gated. What did it say? What did it say? Yeah, it's barely perceptible. Oh my god. <laughs> As it slides over and sits into the body of your sister. I mean, and in a moment, I don't like that, but there's nothing I can do about it also, which I don't like. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't like that. <laughs> do, do, I, do I have a, an idea of, 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 if, if, it, of if that's representative of a possession or, um, you know, is, is it, you know, what it is, or was it something she manifested that she just totally withdrew you can, or? You could throw your <laughs> cults or your magic or whatever you think is yeah, going to help you figure this out. I, I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's more of a general thing, so I think a, a cult should probably be fine. Um, uh, that is our, just a regular success. You know that when doors open up, a lot can come through. And if someone is carrying something with them, something comes through those doors. You know that there are many forms of possession. This seems more symbiotic. As if this spirit wants to latch on and occupy. You know, it's not quite a full possession. Like, for example, she doesn't do the typical possession things of, like, gnarled fingers or uh, she just kind of sits there and just, you know. And she checks... And she pulls out her cell phone. Was was and, there any tangible change in in her specifically when it happened, or like you know, was 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 there? Did she react physically in any way, or you know, blinking, there was a moment. Or... Yeah, she was. She kind of like did like this inhale, mm-hmm. and then looks around as if slightly confused. So it's more then, like it's more like an astral projection almost, where she or somebody she projected that out in a way. That's that's mm-hmm. sort of how I would think of it. Okay. 
Um, but okay, yeah. So he's he's sort of, he's sort of just registering this in his head for the moment, and uh, he'll he'll give Hawthorne one last look to make sure that he's you know keeping an eye on her at this point because you know it's still kind of unclear what's going on there. Uh, some some something something dodgy. <laughs> And, uh, and he'll keep heading for the lab. Yeah. Did you break your arm last game? I'm reading the message. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah. The way a million years ago when we played like a Wild West one shot that you ran. Oh, okay. Okay. I, okay, I wasn't sure we were talking my, about in this game. I snapped my okay. arm on that one. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. Did that happen? No. Okay. Right. A million years ago. <laughs> you always got to break okay. one of my freaking limbs, you <laughs> bastard. Okay. All right. <laughs> Melissa says we need to get to the lab. And we're, Rebecca, we're you can see the blood kind of pooling on your leg. Uh-huh. Give me a quick D10. Ooh, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Rebecca. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. I got a three. Every three minutes, I'm going to set a timer. You will lose one hit point until you get better medical treatment on that. We need to get to the lab in one minute. <laughs> Let's you have go. one. Many, you have one hit point left. I have two hit points. I have two hit or sorry, six minutes. We have six real time minutes to get to the lab. You may want to try to find somewhere else if you can. Before All right. you get to that lab. Oh, yeah, you said it was oh, like a fifteen God. minute drive. Yeah. So Rebecca, well, well, that yeah. that that's going by the book. Um, I, I I can probably cut that to a to a to a four or four or five minute drive. So which, Steve, and we've already been driving. You would, as you're kind of looking into the back seat, you would kind of. Catch a, catch a glance of Rebecca from time to time, and it's like her face is like white, and you kind of see her look like she's like falling asleep a couple of times, and it's not just the the rumble of the cab, like you see her like like looking like she's about to like pass out or very close to it. Hey, uh, Hawthorne, do you have do you have any kind of medical knowledge whatsoever? <clears throat> I mean, I've got a little bit of combat life-saving uh, military training. Uh, then, 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 then you're then you're way above me. I can put on a band-aid, usually, <laughs> the right way. Mechanically, I did put some points into medicine. Yeah, I also have military yeah. survival, but I don't think that would apply. I mean, well, well if we had to, if we had to make a, a trip, you know, a, a what do they call it, a. a so, uh, Savoy, I forget the the, the, the thing, a Travoy, a, tri, a Travoy, I think it is. Anyway, um, I'll just I, I start looking around for any 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 place that might be, uh, that might have any kind of. Is there like a medical... Dwayne Reed or something like a CBS or Walgreens or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a, ph a pharmacy might do, but again, I you know, <laughs> Facts. Uh, uh, I I would have no idea what what it, what what she would need other than, a, than a, I don't think we're going to get a you know a, an acme transfusion kit at the local pharmacy but if there's got to be some way we can stop the bleeding best best I could do is maybe, maybe if you have a pen I can I can do a tracheotomy I saw them do on mash once um Wait, Fender, I, I think it was on a TV better, show but I'm pretty sure I can do it I think you better drive faster yeah he'll 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 put he'll put the pedal like all the way down and and, oh. and, Ooh, and wait a minute and completely, and completely ignore what this is a really old car isn't it yeah it's got a cigarette lighter yeah, it does fuck right off <laughs> i see where you're going i'm gonna this. push this i'm gonna reach down and push the yep. cigarette lighter in oh, and yeah. when that thing pops out my intention is to knowing that rebecca can't see what's there happening <laughs> is I'm going to lean over the seat and I'm going to use that cigarette lighter to try to cauterize around where nice. the bleeding is. Nice. I like As where you're going. you push the button into the cigarette lighter, our scene shifts to Detective Carpy. Oh As God. Brock is popping out a cigarette lighter to light a cigarette. As he's oh! driving... Nicely done. Good transition. The well, van. Ricky. Listen up. Listen up real good. I only... I'm going to tell you this once. Waterville has been fucked for a very, very long time. I've, uh... I'm a cop like you. 
but I'm um <laughs> not like me. <laughs> not right now, Carpy. And you know, and he's all in like tactical gear, um, with a with some body armor. And um he points to this badge on his shoulder. He goes, I'm part of a group. Very fucking Deep proud state. of you. God damn it, Carpy. <laughs> Trying to love with you for once. And as he's saying that, like you hear the tire squeal, like, he turns left and he turns right and he's avoiding people. And at one point, there's a point where a bullet goes through the windshield, kind of cracks it. And because bullets are flying, there's gunshots, there's people crying and screaming. There are things beyond understanding, as obvious. The part of the agency that I'm a part of protects us from that. We're fucking fighting for the human race, Carpe. I think bubbling up in in Carpe this entire time, like the, the like the bullets are hitting, and they're kind of maybe one just kind of winged right past her. Um, there's this like the windshield the, shatters. Yeah, right. Or the car passenger side shatters. Yeah. She she doesn't she doesn't flinch. She doesn't move. Nothing. But you can see like there's this um this laughter that's kind of bubbling up, and every once in a while it kind of comes out. Like <laughs> you know she's yeah she's losing it. Um, mm -hmm. and so when he starts talking about, you know, we're fighting for the human race, like it just, she's just, she's just yeah. starts laughing, like, but her eyes are like wide yeah. and looking yeah. at him. Yeah. Yeah. Like fucking keep it together, Carpy. <laughs> I got to know if you're in or you're out. And she's laughing and, and laughing and. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm so fucking in! Yeah! Get up on that goddamn machine gun and start doing some work. <laughs> oh my god. Let's take a break. Hell oh, yeah, what a great... <laughs> I'm so fucking in! All right. That's badass, dude. Uh, I, I was so focused in, I forgot about breaks. Um, I was like... There we go. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Stick around, we'll see you on the other side. We are back in the taxi. Where are we headed? To the to this lab. <clears throat> to the that, lab. Uh, that Hawthorne mentioned. Uh, I assume that, you know, because I've been Cabby in the square while well, I must know of it, even, if, even if I've never actually been there. Yeah, you know where it's at. It kind of sits yeah. on the prominent hill of Wawaville looking down at the city. Yeah. And you would know anyone who has lived in Wawaville knows that the lab is a converted um, it was previously the Wawaville mansion that was hmm. the founder of the city and after around would say the mid 90s where um when he, one of the lawville descendants died the current oil in the mansion it became abandoned and then about five years ago advent technologies refurbished it into a lab and it kind of sits above on top of the hill looking down at the city hmm. um hawthorne the cigarette lighter pops out <laughs> All right. Um, once it pops out, I'm going to just give a uh, knowing look at Fender. And I'm going to lean over the back seat and say to Rebecca, I just need to uh, let me take a look at that. Lean back. Close your eyes. Don't look. Fender takes a deep breath and holds it because he does not want to smell this. <laughs> Are you driving while this is happening? Fender's driving. You, I'm, oh yeah, yeah. I'm saying like you're still you're not you haven't stopped the car. No. We're oh still no, hauling. no, definitely not. He's hauling okay. ass. Yeah. Um, you said that the bone is sticking out of your leg. Are you talking about the top part of your thigh? Where where exactly and how big is? You can is... see bone. It's not mm -hmm. like really protruding, but you can mm -hmm. see it. Um, okay. It's probably right out of the the thigh. Oh, yeah. I, I absolutely oh, know tough. I'm gonna have to push that back in. Oh my god. 
Rebecca doesn't fight you. She trusts you completely. And she closes her eyes and she's just like, okay. And she leans back. Gosh, I want to say something, but I can't help you guys. Um. All right, Hawth Hawthorne, what are you trying to do? I'm going to. Or tell me what you tell me what you do, and I'll tell you what you should roll. <laughs> <laughs> My intent is to undo where I tied the shirt around it, since it's still bleeding. I'm going to try in one motion. I'm going to try to set the bone or at least push it back in and immediately try to cauterize the wound with this cigarette lighter. Where is your sister sitting? Man, she's behind the driver. She's behind the driver. Behind the passenger. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and... So you're leaning over the seat? Yeah, because she's this? like kind of right her leg. Him. She's behind me, and she's got her leg out, and this is a bench seat. So, mm -hmm. I can't so are you gonna lay me. down, Rebecca? Partially. No, so like Rebecca has her her yeah, kind of like she has her leg up in the middle part of the, okay. Of the seat. Okay. So as Hawthorne leans over, I'm sure it's very exposed, and she she had been kind of like leaning over it. She she feels like sick to her stomach. This mm -hmm. hurts so much. And so she had been kind of leaning forward. So when he tells her to lean back, she just kind of sits back against the the brunched uh, door that she's next to. All right, Hawthorne, is there anything else you want to do before you attempt this? Um, uh, no, this is... This is rapid. I'm I'm doing the soldier thing. This is something that's got to be addressed. Okay. I don't have any medical right. supplies, so this is what I'm gonna do. All right. You reach over and you're just gonna hit the hitter with that cigarette plug. Give me. A I gotta try to set the bone first. Oh, just thank you for off. reminding me. What oh. is your? That's gonna be. I hate it when you say that with such glee. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be your first aid skill. Let's roll in that first aid. Now hold up, I put I put I put stuff in the medicine. Where's first aid? Medicine oh, okay. is okay, uh... okay, okay, okay. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> medicine was eleven, so I'm glad you said okay. first aid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Medicine is more towards reading X-rays, pharmacy, you know, type things. Mm. Okay, perfect. First aid is, you know, yeah, go for it. Roll with disadvantage because we are in a moving vehicle. Sure. She's not laying down on like a nice flat surface. So with, oh, come on. I had a 48, which I could have used some luck to bring that down. With mm -hmm. disadvantage, I have an 88. Do you want to push the roll? Remind me what that means again. That means you can re-roll it. But it's going to be worse. Fail, if I if you fail, fail it would be a failing. worse outcome. But you had the opportunity got, to succeed. I got to push. All right, let's go for it. Nine. Oh, my God. Double zeros and a nine. <laughs> yes. Nice. But I'd like to add a mythos dice to that. Oh, of course. <laughs> Karen. I this is love the least it. Canadian thing I've ever seen you do. <laughs> Channeling Dwight. <laughs> I absolutely Dwight, love it. Dwight absolutely would have made me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's roll on that mythos table. Give oh me God. a D100, and we'll see how Who, this goes. Who's rolling? Who? Which person? It's me. It's him? Okay. 19? Jake. I'm probably fine. <laughs> You gain What's the powers the to heal by touch. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it would put your own life force in. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no real healing in uh, Call of Cthulhu, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. As you feel, you hear an audible crunch. Rebecca yelps in pain. Um as the bone is set. Mm -hmm. 
and then I want to immediately try to cauterize this wound. You're going to try to cauterize it? With the cigarette lighter. Well, for, what they, is, is it is it bleeding bleeding? Like, is it, is it, is that... I mean, the bone was sticking out of her leg. I imagine it's bleeding. Well, that's true, but it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't mean, it, you know, if, He's, if there was no artery or, or he anything. He said, I'm bleeding. I'm going to bleed out in six minutes. Oh, it's bleeding out? Okay. Yeah, so, it, it's and, dark, yeah. dark, Sorry. purple blood almost. Yeah. All, All right. right. So we're going to resolve this mythos, but go ahead and hit that with the cauterization. Is um, that another first aid? Yeah, go ahead and first aid that for me. That is another nine. Nice. You're fucking kidding me, dude. Spot on. Awesome. awesome. Spot on. Good news, Rebecca. You are no longer bleeding. Good. Bad news. Everything must be cleansed with fire for Hawthorne. Oh my god. You feel that the only way to resolve this is through fire. If you can just fix it all, you can fix it all with the right amount of heat. As you, you're, you're holding this hot cigarette lighter. Oh my God. Okay. So the, the smell fills the cab and it's, it's terrible. And it smells like, you know, you know, burnt flesh. Well, the good news is there's a, there's a broken window. So there's plenty of, there is air circulation. <laughs> you see, yeah, good. Good. You see, you see, like something light up in Rebecca's eyes, and she would actually snatch Steve's wrist that has this cigarette lighter, and she would try to like redirect it and like shove it into his fucking face, like this, because see, she is cleansing with fire, baby. Let's go. I meant it for Hawthorne. Oh, what? No, but that's me. Yeah, that's who, what I meant. who was the mythos towards? Was, was the mythos towards, towards? That's a good question. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> so you are cleansing with fire. Never mind. Hawthorne Thanks, was Steve. cleansed with fire. But hey, Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca likes fire too. <laughs> we both are involved. I'm kind of lukewarm on fire, to be honest. <laughs> lukewarm on fire. <laughs> Fire's fire is actually kind of mid, but mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> um, Hawthorne. But yeah, Rebecca's almost passing out again. This is hurt. Hurts very bad. Hawthorne. Rebecca's not quite fixed yet. She has an injured arm. Injured shoulder. You have a lighter. Willpower check. <clears throat> oh my god. Oh, willpower. Willpower. Just power? Yeah. Why are all my numbers 45? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get a nine again. Whoops. Uh, well, there's a five on that guy. Your war crimes. Uh, I got a 35, <laughs> which is a success. So you look at yourself holding this lighter, and the thought that comes to you is that's not going to create enough fire. You start looking around the car for something to create a bigger flame. Um, Silas, you're in the front, and I'm digging in the I'm digging in the glove yeah. box. I turn around, okay. and I start just I open up the glove box and start digging around. What's in your glove box, Silas? Not not much anymore. There were there were some bullets there. Uh, there was there was some <laughs> booze there, but that's gone. Uh, Registration at all? No, no, that's that, that, that he keeps he keeps that over the over the over the uh, with all with his <laughs> like license and stuff. That's on the uh, what do you call it the, the you know, advisor blind yeah. yeah 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 um so i guess there might be some napkins some 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 uh some packages of ketchup okay <laughs> things like that <laughs> wait a minute what am i thinking as no i gloves. grab as i grab that i'll just grab anything that's paper and flammable hawthorne's a smoker he he has a cigarette lighter it's perfect that's perfect all right so you have a cigarette lighter. Um, is she looking for just like napkins and things like that, right? Yeah. All right. You see Rebecca as you're like kind of coming in and out of consciousness. You can kind of smell like someone's lighting matches. You hear Melissa saying, Steve, what what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? What the fuck's I, happening? I'm helping her. 
What are you? No, no, I, 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 no more. I fixed no more. your leg. I'm going to fix your no. arm. I'm going to no, fix your I shoulder. Doesn't... No, it this doesn't need to be fixed. Fire cleanses everything. What the fuck Silas. are you talking about? <laughs> It, yeah, Rebecca. And I'm going is at her with a flaming fistful of uh, napkins. Napkins. <laughs> I I try to I try to intercept him. I like <laughs> essentially high five. Like I'm just trying to. And Rebecca's like like ple- like, it's is crazy. Yeah, we need so number two yeet. I agree. If I understand, there's <laughs> the one window on the on the opposite side that's broken where uh, where Hawthorne's head hit it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So he sees this, and he's just gonna roll down his window to create kind of a cross draft, and hopefully the just blow it out, or just you know, pull it out of the car or whatever. And okay. If nothing else, he wants to let the smoke out. So he's like, yeah, roll down his yeah. window. So now this is a big cross breeze going. Out. These beep, ashes. Beep. Yeah. Yeah. These these ashes kind of flutter out the window. You know, um, for, you know, foreigners on the tape saying, "I want to know what love is," and. and <laughs> <it's just funny. laughs> wow. Um, yeah, as, as, as bits of flaming paper begin to float around yeah, the, the inside of the yeah. car like a hurricane, and the bits of flaming paper, um, Harpy, you are on top of this van pulling the machine gun as much as you can, and you're mowing down whatever gets in the way, as the world is kind of covered with ash, as it kind of flames and things oh, are on fire, and children are transition. running, and everything's burning, and kids are crying, and monsters are yelling, and all the chaos that's going on. Um, the van veers off away from the town center of Lawlerville and um, it kind of pulls off to the side um, and it kind of like comes to rest just outside of the center mass of chaos and violence. Brock, um, you, what do you do? Let's just call it there. Yeah. What do you do? Um, I think I'm, I'm still shooting. I'm laughing. I'm, mm-hmm. um, saying things uncontrollably like, um, um, like just, it's kind of this mantra, like bubblegum worms, maggots, you know, just all these things that I've seen and mm-hmm. I'm saying one and laughing and saying another and laughing and saying another and laughing and, um, and then, you know, I maybe I'll see somebody or something and I'll mm. shoot it and I'm like, die, die, die. I'm like, Harpy, Harpy. And, what? you know, and, and, you know, it's dry. The gun's been clicking. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good at all. Yeah. Come. And, and he kind of like, and and he kind of um, gets out of the van and it kind of beckons you to you know get out for a moment. And he walks around to the back of the van, and he opens up. You know how those old Dodge conversion van has the um, doors that you open up, you know, like that kind of way. Oh. Um, do you get out? Do you get off of the fifty caliber machine gun from the top? What do you do? As he kind of walks around to the back of the van. Um, yeah, I mean, he says it, it's empty, it's dry, and then he said my name, and it looks like maybe he's maybe giving me some more ammo. Uh, you know, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll go down and see what he's got for me. All right. He's, he looks at you and kind of squares up his shoulder. He does one of these eyes. Can you see me in my hair? My focus. Intrusive thought is, Bruh. or the not intrusive thought is, I really want to punch this guy right now. But what's and up? Brock can see that like rage, and he goes, "I know, I know what it feels like." And there's kind of blood in his teeth, right? And he kind of spits out a chunk of blood on the side, and he pulls out the blackberry, and it's covered in his own blood. And as he opens up the back, there's a crate that is kind of taking up where the seats are kind of laid down, the back part of this conversion van, this big old Dodge van. 
and he lifts up in the crate and you see a nuclear warhead with a sickle and hammer on it. Oh. A bunch of expletives will run probably out of her mouth and she'd be looking at Brock. WTF. Carpy. <laughs> WND. <laughs> this is when shit goes wrong. You asked me where I was. I was getting this. What are we going to do? Just light everything up? See the Lawlerville of the world. Fuck yeah. Okay. Oh. oh man. We need to get this to the nexus of the event of the incursion. <laughs> and he starts coughing. It, it won't do any good out here. When you we say need Nexus, to get it. You, you, you're talking back back there? And she's pointing back at all the chaos that we just left. To the fucking lab. We need oh. to get it to the lab. There was a... There's an access point that leads to... Do you know what a ley line is? Okay, fuck it. We need to get it there. <laughs> and just as he is begins to explain this, you hear, you know, like a rock is thrown and it kind of shatters the window. And there's this shambling crowd of lobbyist type people like kind of shambling towards you. And they're about 20 yards off. And Brock reaches into the van and hands you an AR-15. You still can shoot, uh, right? And she laughs again. (laughs) You know, doesn't reply, just grabs the gun from him. Yeah. All right. Back to the taxi scene. We are about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes away from the lab. Give me a quick luck check on um, Silas, please. Yep. Uh, Man. Man. 26, that's a good one. Uh, Yeah, 26 made it. Nice, nice. You look at your fuel tank. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And your fuel is dropping very quickly. There may be a leak in the tank. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. What do you want to do? I mean, I'm... What what what's it what's what's the uh, what's the I mean he was he was in the middle of work when all this went down so I assume mm-hmm. he had a pretty At least pretty three quarters of a tank yeah, yeah. Um, you're thinking maybe from the um when you got sideswiped maybe something punctured the tank sure. underneath it yeah I thought about getting out and taking a look but I didn't want to give the keeper any uh, any ideas so I uh... <laughs> 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 so what is I, 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 I mean he can get pretty far on even even in a, even in even in an older car like this he can get pretty far on even a quarter of a tank mm-hmm. so if it's as long as it's above a quarter he's still gonna, he's gonna just continue to the to the lab because it, okay at this point from what it sounds like he can and then you know because he has no idea what's gonna happen when when, when they get there he, mm-hmm. he I don't think Hawthorne has really told him mm-hmm. specifics about you know what he's gonna what he's got to do mm-hmm but he assumes something's got to be done at this point and so he's going to uh assume that he can you know maybe take a look at it, it, take a look at the car when they get there and maybe do a quick patch of some sort and okay save, saving gas from a an employee car that's been left in a lot of something you know he's this is sort of was going through his mind but he as long as it's above a quarter of a tank he's still going to go go for it because he can he can easily squeeze five or ten minutes out of out of that okay all right um <clears throat> 
Hawthorne, your sister begins to thrash about in the back seat next to Rebecca as her stomach continues, begins to like swell at a very accelerated rate. Rebecca, she you can you you can see her thrashing uh-huh. and she does one of the things like an alien when they lift up their stomach to see what's oh going my on. Oh god, yeah, and and in the center of her stomach is literally like someone like an eyeball and it's looking around and it's veiny and it's kind of bulging out of her stomach, almost as if her stomach is becoming an eye. And she quickly covers it and she looks at her phone and she's trying to tap things into it, but doesn't have the dexterity. What do you want to do? Uh, I would, um, I would turn and I would just say, Bender, faster. <laughs> I would just if I, were I what am I gonna do? I can't freaking comfort her or anything. And I, I I guess I I would say oh I know what I would do. I would say give me your phone. What do you need to What do you need to send? And she she hands over like the phone, and it looks like just a whole bunch of strange calculations. Yeah. And like a um, if a physicist drew the black hole formulas but put it on a phone, mm-hmm. and like she can't even look at you right now as she could continues to screech and moan. Hawthorne, you hear your sister yelling in the back seat, gripping her stomach. <clears throat> Hold on. You smell the gasoline. What now? From the vehicle. Hold on, we're getting closer. We got to be getting closer. Hurry up. You can feel her gripping the seats of the back as um, you come up on the hill and you see this lab. The lab is, it almost looks like a, um, do you know the triangle that's off of I-96 or 6, the Highway 6 in Grand Rapids? It's a giant pyramid. It used to be a church, I think. I yep. do. Okay, you know, the the lab is basically a triangle structured building. Mm -hmm. Um, It's almost like it's like a pyramid, if you will, as you begin to pull up on it. um, Hawthorne, you hear your sister thrashing violently in the back. One more thing real quick. As Rebecca's looking at this indecipherable shit, she finally just kind of like, she pulls out her phone and starts taking pictures of what is on Melissa's phone. Like to capture it. Yeah. As opposed to, the, you will take pictures of math equations as opposed to the eyeball on her stomach. Spoken yeah, well, like a true you know math what? teacher. She, she covered that <laughs> shit up. I can't, I can't be like, hey, can I get a quick snapshot of that? She handed yeah. me her phone. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. All right. Um, yeah, you start taking pictures of the phone. Um, Hawthorne, you feel your sister grab your shoulder from behind. And it's like just like her fist kind of sits on your shoulder. And you feel her hand open up as her lanyard and flash drive kind of drop into your lap. You approach the lab, and as you approach the lab, what do you guys want to do? Uh, yeah, Finn, Finn is heading in for the basically where wherever it looks like the the, the front door is, mm-hmm. and you know a lot of times they have like an awning over it or whatever it's for you know pulling up in front of it. But uh, but it, it, he's gonna but he wants he wants to pull up in front of the door even if it means going up onto the sidewalk to do so. Okay, he wants to get as close to the door as possible. Okay, um, all right. As soon as we come actually, to a without stop. actually driving into the lab. <clears throat> As soon as we come to a stop, I'm opening up the door and I, I yell to Fender, help her. And then I run around to the other side and I grab my sister. Yeah. And so your sister's pulling. in the middle. I think you got to crawl over Rebecca to get to your sister. But Rebecca's on the passenger side. I'm on the passenger side. I'm in. Yeah. You would have to crawl over Melissa to get to me. No. Yeah. I'm going to go around the car to the passenger or driver's side to help 
to let get let Melissa out. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. As you run over to the door and you open the door and Melissa stops you and she shakes her head and she says You mean no. You hear the voice of the 14 year old boy she means no as you see like her face like the front of her face is her but on the back of her head is the 14 year old boy as he has grafted oh. himself onto oh. your sister oh. Oh. Yes. real sanity <laughs> oh my god <laughs> move over uh Kirby. there might be some room on that struggle bus Oh my god, dude. Sanity. Silas, you can sense all this happening as you have the car has come to a stop. Yeah. How'd you do? 79. I have a 45 sanity. Ooh. Give me a D6 on sanity. Five. You smell gasoline. You have a lighter. Oh my god. Rebecca's making her way, struggling out of the cab. <laughs> but she's not going very fast. Clutching, <clears throat> clutching the ID badge and the USB drive. I look at what was my sister, the bulging stomach with the movement under her shirt and this, this spirit turned corporeal from my past grafted onto the back of her head and seeing the state she's in and realizing ah, I can fix this and I shove the um, ID card in the flash drive into my pocket and when my hand comes out I'm holding that lighter mm. Silas you see this what do you do and you hear it and you see mm. the creature in the back seat. You smell the gasoline. I'm um, there too. <laughs> yes, everybody can act. Rebecca, what do you do? Yeah. Silas, no, Silas, Silas go I first, then Rebecca. All right. I, I don't want to act. I'm just informing Fender that I am also in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's going to yell to Hawthorne, you know, put, uh, put that away. We're all going up, including your sister. As I open the lighter and you're going to burn your sister. And with the, the light of the lighter reflecting in my eyes, I just turn over to uh, Fender. I can fix this. Fire. Fender, Fender starts the car. Is all. And, 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 and punches it. Well, and I drop the lighter into the gas. Oh. <gasps> Everybody, he's rolled me well. Wow, I hope you guys can live through this. As the car begins to, and it can't drive that fast because it has been damaged. Mm -hmm. Um, give me a luck check with disadvantage. All of us or Fender? Just Fender first. Okay, you got it. Come on, Alex. Yeah. Uh, now nah, I get a fifty-four. <clears throat> the car turns over it barely starts it has no gas in it because it's all falling it's all leaking out of the tank mm -hmm. it begins to drive maybe three four miles per hour it starts making distance the okay. lighter falls it starts the trail of fire begins to crawl towards the door of the car itself rebecca you're in this car you are next to a monster hybrid pregnant eyeball miss hawthorne as steve hawthorne stands back and watches the fire trail reach to the car you can smell the gasoline i guess oh my god i would with every ounce of energy I have, I would try to dive over Melissa out of the fucking car. The door is the door is still open. I, assume. I will let you. Yeah. 
You okay. can go forward with an adrenaline hit if you want. Okay. And you can... How about this? Does, does, yeah. Describe to me what you're trying to do, and we'll see how what, what dice I assign to it. Okay. I see this happen. You know, actually... Does does is the it do did my window get broken? My side window get broken when we got T boned. Oh, that's yeah. I think that's probably yeah. closer. Yeah, and honestly, at the angle I'm at, it'd probably be yeah. easier to try to go out the window. So okay. I would try try to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's gonna take most upper body. So yeah. instead of the negative forty, you can roll with a negative twenty. Oh, man. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> is this a strength check, dexterity? Um, let's do. Whichever one gives you the best chance to live. They're the same. All Here right. we go. <laughs> Alrighty. This. You got this. No, I don't. I got a 95. Push it. I mean, I got to push it. I got to try again. Right? Okay. Okay. Here I go. <gasps> I got a one. Spectacular. Nice. <laughs> you feel a burst. Describe to me how you escape out of the back end of this car that's rolling at a very slow speed as the flames reach the car and the back of it, it becomes engulfed in fire. I guess I would kind of take one last look at Melissa. I still have her phone in my hand mm -hmm. and I would kind of like just, I see this like trail of flame coming up and Rebecca would like kind of mechanical advantage, like she would put her elbow on the on the uh, outside of the car and just sort of like reach up and out of the car and then just kind of force herself through kind of and just land however she does. It hurts to land on the ground very badly, but- I was gonna say, I, I, assume, I assume with a with roll that good, the, the, like it was probably, just, it probably just happened to be going by some 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 shrubberies, some, like, like yeah, some landscaping. Some decorative yeah. yeah, some decorative <laughs> right. landscaping. I land just, like, right on right a boxwood. Yeah. Right, yeah, right yeah. into it. And it yeah. breaks my fall. Yeah. And uh, exactly. so it, you would see Rebecca's almost like sitting in this boxwood, like it's, like mm -hmm. it's a chair almost as mm -hmm. this car rolls by. Um, even, even even your leg landed like elevated elevated slightly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, she she yeah escapes mm -hmm. the car. Silas. Just kinda, yeah. yeah. Stuck there. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm no, sorry. no, no. She's just kind of stuck there, watching the rest happen. Like she's kind of powerless at this point. You did it. The car. The car is yeah. traveling <laughs> along very slowly. Silas. There is a screaming hybrid monster in the back what do you want to do it's your car the back of it is on fire yeah are, are there any water features in this uh, little you know building it you know this stuff uh, corporate you know yeah yeah structure? this this pyramid is it's stark you can't even tell where the true entrance is there are no water fountains or anything well no i was looking for like like a, like a, a little pond nearby or so you know like that, that sort of thing you know oh there is a running river it's probably about 600 feet below you, Lawlerville River, from the top of the hill that you're on. Hmm. Little plateau, I should say. So a little, little, little steep for that. Well, he'll just he'll just try and go over the grass at least to try to see if he can get the fire to. Well, you said they're very caught. What's that? <sighs> yeah, there is no grass. It's kind of on yeah. a concrete. Okay. <sighs> I guess he'll just get as far away from the building as possible. You're driving down the building. No, away from it. Stay away from the building. Okay. Give me a 1d4 roll. <clears throat> two. Two. In two turns, your car will be completely on fire. Sorry about your car, dude. Detective Carpy. Brock is not looking good. He is... You know, you guys are running out of ammo as you're kind of sitting here, um, paused. And he hands you the Blackberry. <clears throat> and he goes, this is the detonator. Pay attention to this code. 
Seven. Five. Three. Thirteen. Seventeen. Fifteen. Nineteen. It's pretty simple. It's just prime numbers down and back. I can trust you, right? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're coming, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. Yeah, I got this, I got this. And she'll repeat the numbers back. Um, and she's got this like little ditty that's going between each of these things, like seven. That's the number of people I saw ripped to shreds. Five, that, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. a mnemonic device. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> Back to Silas in the taxi. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? As the car is rolling and is on fire, the creature the creature reaches back and begins to claw at you. All right. Uh, So he's he's gonna pull he's gonna pull pull it over, and uh, with 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 sort of with with sort of as he sort of leans away from the clawing. Um. With sort of a resigned, uh, uh, you know, um, expletive, he, he uh, he'll he'll climb out, and then and then just start not running, but walking up the hill, back toward the uh, the pyramid, with the burning mm-hmm. car behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, Hawthorne. Slow motion, if possible. Slow motion, right? <laughs> Don't yeah. look back. Don't look back. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, Hawthorne, how do you feel? as the car bursts in the flames and you hear the dying screams of your sister shouting as she is burned and incinerated inside the vehicle. I don't know. I don't know what that was, but it was not Melissa. that whatever that was she's she's gone and that thing that's taking control of her it won't be able to anymore or anyone else because I cleansed it with fire You, it begins to rain from the Cosmic River. The rain begins to fall, just like the first night you enter Lawlerville. As you put your lighter away, you feel that metal card in your pocket. And you remember, give me a call if it gets weird. What do you do? With the trail of gasoline beginning to sputter out, with Fender's taxi cab engulfed in flames and the silhouette of Fender coming forward and Rebecca not far away in a bush the cosmic river flowing overhead I pull out my phone put the card over (sighs) shit's beyond weird and I punch in the number on the card take this carpy Brock says, I have one last thing to do. And he, I need that gun. She'll pass it to him. He's holding his side. His mouth is bleeding. He takes off the badge on his shoulder and he puts it in your hand. 
The badge is a circle with white bordering trim around it with a white triangle in the center of it. And on each point says Scientia Est Mowers as you look at it. There's a little bit of his blood stained on it. Your phone begins to ring. Like my, my phone, not the Blackberry. No, the Blackberry rings. Oh. I just kind of look at it and look at... I look at... Brock. Do I Brock says... This? You said you're in. And... He... Takes the machine gun. I have something to do. And he runs off into... The horde of... Shambling creatures. And the fog engulfs him as you hear machine gun fire go off. You have a blue, uh, blueberry phone, blackberry phone that's ringing in your hand. I think I'm looking after him as he's running away. I'm like, where do I take this? And I'm pointing at the the, the, the box. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then and the phone's ringing. And I'm just like, fuck. Open up the phone. What? Hawthorne, you hear Carpy yelling, what on the phone and that's where we're going to end it oh <laughs> oh my god that's awesome um Carpy I want you on your character sheet I'm going to give you a new one by the way the one that Dwight's been actually playing on the whole time that everyone else has not been and on the character sh- on this character sheet on your inventory I want you to write 50 kiloton nuclear bomb as a weapon <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Woohoo! Wow. One, one use. One wow. use. Yeah. <laughs> one is... use only. <laughs> Just that... one. one next to your ammo. <laughs> oh my god. Right, that oh. meant trigger everybody. Oh man. Oh. That was incredible. <laughs> that was really good. Worth the wait. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, oh that's gosh. that's some good stuff. Thank you so much Excellent. for playing. Wow, uh, so Thank much you, fun. Ricky. Thank you. <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, before we start the outros here, Carrie has something yes. she would like to say. So, if anybody uh, watching happens to be at Gen Con this coming weekend on Saturday uh the well what is saturday saturday is the anybody know the date fifth it is this gonna Thursday be is the, the, the fifth, fifth. It's the fifth. correct uh saturday the fifth at gen con in indianapolis uh me and one of my other gaming crews dice tales live are going to be performing uh live and it's gonna be a great time so if you happen to be there and you're looking for something to do at 7 p.m that's where we'll be check it out it's gonna be a lot of fun Excellent. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you all again for a great night of gaming. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody who tuned in and hung out with us. I saw quite a few people lurking in the chat. Uh, if you are somebody that likes to lurk and uh, you don't necessarily participate in chat, that's okay. We appreciate you all the same and hope you and enjoy the show and if you're somebody that watches later on the VOD, we hope you've been enjoying uh, these games. Um, and uh yeah just thank you so much and of course a huge shout out to our incredible historian who is pulling all of this stuff out of his own twisted mind ricky uh but also thank you to everybody else around the table uh karen and alex and carrie myself and though he wasn't here he was with us in spirit dwight without whom This would have just been Ricky talking to himself for a couple hours. With that, we're going to go ahead and end this stream the same way we end every stream. You can say it with me if you want.